Hi, 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 everyone. Pubs the knee lished Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd. I have uh, finally achieved my dream. I put out a hot take or two on NFTs and musicians kind of you know, flaunting their NFTs around the internet and uh, sort of pipelining people into this very sussy world of crypto and uh, ape images. And someone over at uh, uh, the Washington Post reached out and said, hey, you want you want to type this out into a longer opinion and maybe uh, get it uh, in the post? And I was like, I'll try it. I'll try anything once. Very happy to have this up. It's been getting a pretty positive reception online, even among people who hate me and uh, wish I was dead. Uh, seems even they think that this is a uh, uh, my one good take and my one W, so I'm very happy about that. I'm excited about that. Maybe I can get to really working on that second W. It's possible. But yeah, this, this is the piece. I wanted to read it with you guys and go over it and just uh, uh, be happy and celebrate uh, the momentous occasion. Opinion musicians, please stop luring your fans into the risky world of NFTs. Uh, for anybody who's like, you know, not in the know, like I, I didn't word that headline. Uh, often writers don't uh, word their own headlines, but I, I am happy with this headline. Anthony Fantano is a music critic and host of The Needle Drop. Well, I sure am. I'm actually very happy to say that, um, you know, there, there were some edits to the article to add some extra context and information to a few things that I said, but as far as like the core opinion and everything and uh, uh, the major blueprint of what I wrote out, there wasn't a whole lot changed. This is a plea to uh, popular musicians. Please stop hurting your fans into potential crypto and NFT scams. Please, 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 please. You know, I wrote that shit. Uh, that's six pleases in total. So you know, this is pretty serious. Anybody who's glanced at the news recently has caught wind of the financial feeding frenzy sparked by NFT unique digital assets such as images, music, videos, really any commodified piece of media online. Sometimes you gotta just state this stuff in, uh, you know, just black and white, just very plain speak to get the point across. I sort of, you know, imagined uh, putting this up, uh, writing this, that uh, it would be reaching an audience of Washington Post readers that might not necessarily be super familiar with the topic. So there's an ocean of articles about NFTs where the story is less about the art there's not much on that front to talk about anyway. That That is true. The art in most cases, most cases is not really great. And uh, more about their perceived value. Nowhere are these headlines proliferating faster than in the music world, with artists being turned into crypto billboards by brands such as Board Ape Yacht Club, which releases illustrations of cartoon primates. The musicians Post Malone and The Weeknd recently dropped a music video that depicted the purchase of a Board Ape NFT. Post Malone reportedly spent more than $700,000 for his two board apes, but he's just the latest artist to jump on the bandwagon, Eminem, Justin Bieber, Lil Baby, Future, and Steve Aoki, and, and the, the numbers are growing every day, there's more than even these guys, uh, are among those grabbing headlines by simply making announcements of a NFT purchase. Uh, so here I say, this isn't a passion, it's barely a newfound interest, uh, the whole thing stinks like an AstroTurf promotional campaign to generate interest in cheaply made primate doodles that God, that's a bar. That's, that's a, a bar. bar. Even One Direction fans are cringing at Liam Payne's new Twitter account, which again is very cringe. I recommend looking at it, uh, where he tweets about NFTs in the same way that you might respond to uh, coworker baby pictures that you don't want to see. Meaning like when he posts stuff on there, it's like, oh, this is cool. Wow, so neat. I don't have anything against the idea of people trading or buying digital art for fun, which I don't. Which, which I don't. And if you're an independent artist somehow making it in the NFT space and you have fans who are genuinely into what you do and are willing to uh, spend money on it uh, through, you know, crypto or whatever, I, I you know, I, I guess that's fine. And you're not, you know, you're obviously you're not scamming your fans. You're not consciously scamming them, attempting to scam them in any way. I'm concerned about the scams. Some of the overnight success independent artists have seen in the NFT space is genuinely inspiring. But to focus on this is to ignore the lack of regulation in this corner of the internet and the amount of scams that result, which frankly, the more that I look at it seem like more of a feature than a bug. It seems like many of those who are gatekeepers and, uh, uh, the ones making the most money in the NFT space per prefer for it to be relatively unregulated so these scams can continue to 
proliferate. But again, that's just my opinion, and that's me editorializing uh, once more. Uh, this is not the kind of world for people who are still learning how to make smart financial decisions. Uh, there are you know, not even just young people. There are adults that struggle with that. Even if Bored Ape seems like a relatively stable brand, most of the roads that lead beyond this NFT gateway, because I think there's a lot of people that get into Bored Apes and they sort of like, you know, that's like the first one. That's like your entry level NFT. Uh, but then beyond that, like there's a lot of dead ends and outright scams. Recently, a Bored Ape lookalike reportedly ran off with uh, over a million in minting fees before disappearing from the internet in what is known as a rug pull. A look up Big Daddy Ape something. It's it's hilarious uh, how much of a ripoff it was of Bored Ape and how much money they ran off with. Uh, even Payne, yeah, Liam Payne had to warn people on his uh, crypto account, mind you, <laughs> that uh, there's this shady NFT music site that was like, you know, minting his music as NFTs and uh, uh, a lot of other artists as well. But I love that Liam has an NFT uh, Twitter page where he's talking about NFTs, but then he also has to go on there to be like, oh, hey, watch out for a uh, Liam Payne NFT scams. The dangers of the NFT world don't just rest on the shoulders of rogue scammers, though. Some of the largest mediators and marketplaces in this space, uh, such as Civic and OpenSea, have done a poor job at guaranteeing legitimate results to brands looking to get in on the NFT craze. Uh, that is the one point where I think there, there was a little bit of an alteration to my wording and my meaning here because I was kind of citing, uh, you know, the Big Daddy Ape thing. And uh, look, some of these NFT scams are allegedly like, you know, verified by these marketplaces like, oh, yeah, you know, this is like a credible seller or this or that or the other thing. And then, you know, again, if like you're sort of the marketplace where people are getting access to this stuff, I feel like you have some kind of like responsibility to be like, well, you know, is this person going to do a rug pull? Is this person going to scam everybody? Is this other person going to do this? Is this person going to run off with the money? Like, imagine if you went into the grocery store and because there was no regulation of the items in the store, 20 percent of any given anything that you see in the store could kill you. Um, is that a store that you'd be likely to shop in or, you know, uh, walk into, be willing to like spend your money in? No, of course not. Like you want to know that whatever marketplace it is that you're stepping into, the product that you're purchasing is safe, that it's verified in some way, that you can trust it. Right now, the value of your unique token can disappear overnight because there is very little oversight. Maybe that will change, uh, but this is not the world we live in. So, you know, look, if there's a point in the future where, the whole NFT everything is 100% on the up and up and these scams are not so common. I guess maybe that leaves room for a discussion, more consideration. But again, this is not the world that we live in. And famous musicians and other celebrities greedily funneling their fans into this space isn't helping. It's just assuring that this stuff stays lucrative at the cost of a genuine emotional connection people have made with some of their favorite musicians' work. Uh, that's a trade that does not pay off in the long term. You know, a little bit of a uh, you know, some some stock, some investment terminology. <laughs> but yes, overall, very happy to have this opinion piece out. Very happy to have the reception, the reactions, uh, seeing a lot of people agreeing, some people disagreeing. It, you know, it's it, it, it's good to be a part of the discourse. And yeah, I mean, I, I will leave it at that. You know, we will link down to the article in the D box so you guys can check it out for yourself. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching this video over here next to my head. It's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, WAPO, NFTs, uh, forever.